Hello and welcome back. It's V, let's get started. Trying to find the best keyboard for the Mini 6 is sometimes impossible. Over the last year or so, I found some good, I found some bad, some with a trackpad and some without. What happens if there's a hybrid device that has both? A keyboard that also doubles as a trackpad? Well, there is one product I know of that does both quite well. This is the Mokubo Keyboard Trackpad Hybrid. This can be picked up off Amazon for around $100. Granted, this is quite a premium price, but does it justify that? This keyboard does offer features none of the other ones do. It is a hybrid keyboard in which the keys become the trackpad. Having a touch sensitive layer on top of the keyboard, it's really weird at first, but it does become useful. Inside the box is another box. The other box gives you all the basic info about the product. Inside the other box, is an envelope which holds everything. The company has a letter about their product, their mission statement, and what they hope to achieve. This keyboard is a little bit smaller, it's lighter, it's more compact, and it's also quite travel friendly. The trackpad is the keyboard itself, and the cover also doubles as a kickstand. On top of the keyboard has the basic LED lights for charging and Bluetooth pairing. It can connect up to three different devices, and there is no pass-through. It will work with Mac, Windows, Linux, iOS, Android, anything with Bluetooth. It is rocking Bluetooth 5.1. It is not backlit. The spacebar is split into two different buttons. Their first model they demoed had trackpad keys. I guess they liked this design better. It just really throws me off. I tend to click the wrong part of the spacebar. Left click is the red button. Right click is function plus red button. Combining both of these together should have not been a thing, but I'm not really a fan of this. The material here is quite nice. It's a nice soft plastic USB type C on the side. It takes two hours for a full charge and you will get 60 hours out of it. This device is thin. It is thinner than my iPad mini 6. The kickstand is held up with magnets. It's perfect for medium and small size tablets. Not so much for the bigger iPad 12.9 inch. It's way too heavy for the kickstand. Besides all that, inside the box, there's nothing else. The box does have a QR code for instructions. If you go to their website, it's strictly Chinese. With iOS, Safari can translate it to English. Because of the compact design, it's on a full-size QWERTY keyboard. It's stated to be 40% smaller. Just comparing it to my Magic Keyboard, there is a noticeable size difference. The company did this to make this more travel-friendly. Muscle memory for myself, it takes time to adjust. There is an option to turn off the trackpad to pair it hold down function one two or three go to bluetooth settings for whatever device and pair it if you are like me and you do like some good sci-fi dramas with a wonderful cast of characters which spans over a dozen books x-force by craig allison is a series to really check out pre-order now for book 16 which does drop in december right now with my promo code you can get two free audiobooks, 30 days for free, and after the free trial, it's $14.95 a month. You can cancel at any time. Re-listening with Skippy and Joe is such a wild ride. This series is one worth checking out. This keyboard is also a trackpad, a hybrid two-in-one device without needing multiple devices doing different things, but will this be any good? Sometimes combining products seems like a good idea, but execution can be bad. The whole keyboard is the trackpad. The keyboard keys are almost touching. There's not much travel in between each key. Mokubo had a smart idea because how often do people really use a mouse with an iPad? With most non-Apple trackpads, there aren't all the native Apple gestures that really make their devices magical. I've reviewed a dozen different Bluetooth trackpads in the past. Most of them don't really offer the same Apple-like gestures. Therefore, I am expecting the same here. Consider this trackpad more of a Windows-like experience and not something akin to, let's say, the Magic Trackpad. The trackpad here works as expected. It's quick, fast, and responsive. Like, it's really unique to have a trackpad on top of a keyboard. One finger clicking and dragging works as expected. Two finger scrolling is equally the same. Like, it does have the fake pinch to zoom. It's really control plus or control minus. It only works in the browser. It will not work in the gallery or anywhere else. The responsiveness is actually really good. 
good. Sometimes trying to move too fast can occasionally cause it to hiccup, but overall it's better than some of the other ones I have used. Three finger swiping across can switch between open applications. Three finger swiping up will bring up multitasking. Three finger swiping down will take you back to the home screen. Typically four fingers will give you a screenshot, but here it doesn't do anything. Overall, this does work as advertised. In version two, I would like to see the native Apple gestures integrated to this keyboard. Not having those is the only thing really holding this product back. The premium price point of this product would be justifiable, but because it doesn't have that, the $100 price tag for a Bluetooth keyboard is a little bit of a hard sell. You can pick up a good folding keyboard for about $40 or $50. There's actually a version two for the bigger iPads. So in the meantime, I'm kind of speculating if they actually fixed what was wrong for the version two. Going a step further and going beyond just my iPad to my MacBook Pro, seeing how the gestures do work with Mac OS and not just iPad OS. With iOS, having a trackpad really isn't required to navigate the OS. It makes it easier, but with Mac OS, it's kind of required here. Switching between different screens, pinch to zoom, are just two things that are required for my workflow. Hence, it's pretty much the reason why I always have a magic trackpad on my desk. This keyboard will work with anything with Bluetooth, but sometimes Apple stuff does not play nice with non-Apple products. None of the native Apple gestures are present here for Mac OS. Like clicking and dragging with one finger is fine, two finger for scrolling, but like I said, there is no pinch to zoom, not being able to switch between multiple screens and back forth. This type of device just really limits what you can do with it. I mean, this will work with Mac OS, but it's more ideal for iPad OS. I will probably never use it. It does not integrate well with my own workflow. Getting to the typing experience, the keys are really close together. That was the only way they could get this trackpad to work. The tactile feedback while typing is good. It's nice and clicky. It's not the best. It's not the worst. It's kind of somewhere in between. The feedback isn't as good as something from Apple or Logitech, but it's not nearly as bad as those cheap $20 keyboards on Amazon. It's somewhere in between. Like having a keyboard without much travel in between each keys, I do have to look down and hunt for them. I completely understand and the design choice here. The trackpad works seamless. It was a very smart idea. Typing isn't the best. On top of it being a smaller keyboard, I'm not really as fast here compared to a full-size QWERTY keyboard. It's not backlit. That's not really a deal breaker. Just doing my normal typing test, I can get between 40, 45, about 50 words per minute. My preferred layout, the Logitech MX series, they're nice and clicky, they're big, they're backlit. On the flip side, because they are so big, they're not not really travel friendly and they are quite bulky. This is very lightweight and travel friendly. Throw it in your bag, that's all you have to do. The MX Keys Mini is the best smaller keyboard, but compared to this, it is still kind of bulky. Overall, the keyboard is good, but it's not perfect. This is a very unique product. There's really nothing else like this on the market. Having the trackpad built on top of the keyboard, it's a very unique form factor. It reminds me of the BlackBerry Passport which had its keyboard double as a trackpad. Being a hybrid device, things have to be given up in order to achieve their end goal. As a hybrid device, Mokubo achieved this very well. Being a standard trackpad works well for iPads or tablets. Instead of pulling out a keyboard and mouse, there's this, but it does have a premium price. It's over $100. Compared to most foldable keyboards are only 40 or 50 bucks. Plus the area of the trackpad is the whole keyboard. Then let's say three inches for a foldable keyboard. If it was lower to, let's say, a 70, I feel as if that would be a perfect sweet spot. You really have to like this device to really want to purchase it. It does lose points with Mac OS. I would like to see version 2 and see how much better it is. So, like always, it's V. Smash that bell and subscribe. Peace.